Welcome to this free immigration help channel. Today I'm making another video answering your uh, comments and uh, questions most importantly. Uh, but before I begin with this I wanted to say thank you everyone for uh, to the supporters of this channel uh, through the memberships and through super likes. Uh, really really appreciate the support. Your support help, helps keep this channel going. Alright, today I'll try to answer as many questions uh, as possible, so let's get straight into it. The very first one I have from Mixed, okay, we're not gonna get into <laughs> into the names, I'll skip this one. Alright, I have a question. I have a few traffic violations that are misdemeanors. We, I guess it's a will that prevent my fiance from being approved for a K-1, a K-1 visa. Okay, so uh, whenever it comes to the uh, immigration cases and uh, starting immigration cases, they, y you are in this case a sponsor because you are sponsoring the K-1 visa. So for a sponsor, it's not as strict of a background as, you know, whenever it is yourself, whenever you are the beneficiary. So to answer your questions briefly if if your fiance had uh, a traffic violation right now that would have been a concern and i would have said hey you need to worry about you know hiring an immigration attorney getting a waiver but in your case i don't think there should be any problems uh but just in case keep in mind an immigration attorney might be helpful in situations like this uh, or a waiver if you want to do research yourself but no, it, it will definitely not prevent uh, your fiance from being approved for uh, K-1. All right, let's move on to the next question from uh, iTech. This one I can pronounce without any repercussions. Since there is a war in Ukraine, how long they can stay in US? Only six months or more? Uh, okay, so with uh, this is on uh, I-539, the um, I-539. That's the uh, visa, visa, um, um, extension okay so specifically for ukrainian citizens there is right now a special uh, program from usas from immigration services uh called i don't remember what it's called something for ukraine um, you can find it on usas.gov basically that program is uh, uh where Anybody who is in US, it doesn't matter whether you are relative or not relative, anybody in the US can sponsor a person who is in Ukraine who is a citizen of Ukraine to come down here. So as long as there is a sponsor here, they are able to get non-immigrant status and come down here. Now, it might be immigrant or you might be able to switch to an immigrant status, but there is an option like this. So the reason why I am mentioning it is because if the person from Ukraine is here, right, and their status is expiring because you're asking the question on non-immigrant status, so basically, uh, for example, like a student visa or B1, B2 visitor visa. So if that's the case, there is an option to extend their stay through I-539 without any problems. <clears throat> you shouldn't have um, any problems extending that stay, extending that non-immigrant status, because there is a you know serious situation going on, and obviously everybody knows about it. Uh, but as an option, you also have that program. I actually did a separate video on it. It's on this channel, so check it out. Hopefully, it will be helpful. Okay, let's move on to the next one uh, from Pedro Ibrahim. <clears throat> I need your help. I have never been to an interview, but your video has enlightened my mind. Well, I'm glad that my video was uh, useful. Hey, just comment how, how I can help. And, you know, I mean, this is for the asylum uh, story. Actually, there is a inter specifically on the interview. I have the videos. Check check them out and, and hopefully that, that will be able to help you. Uh, there is a separate video that I've made specifically on the interviews for the asylum and also for the uh, citizenship. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Sylvester Dawson. How can I change this video from English to Spanish? Okay, I, sorry, I have no idea. That would be a question for YouTube. Also, I am a US citizen, but my wife lived in Dominican. Okay, I filed the I-130, which is the sponsor, and I-130A, but I am waiting for approval. Once the forms are approved, 
and I submit the forms I-485 and upload my financial documents and I it get reviewed and she's notified on the next step. Will I also be notified through my email so that I can assist her on the procedure from here in the US? She do not speak English. Okay, excellent question. <clears throat> so whenever it comes to filling out, um, he, he, here's the thing. I want to make a distinction between the two because once you submit right your I-131 to USAS, right? Once it is approved on the USAS side, your case is transferred to the Department of State. Now, on the Department of State, that's where you make all the payments, all that stuff for her visa, all of that sort of stuff. So, yes, naturally, you will get the notifications to your email because it is your email that you have created the, um, you know, the online USAS account. So if you are getting notifications now from USAS, then you will get this on the same email, you will get the notifications from the Department of State. Here's my recommendation. If there is, if they are asking for the email uh, from your, um, I'm sorry, I missed the spouse or fiance, spouse, I think you said, um, your wife, actually. Yeah, your wife. Um, if they're asking for email for your wife, if she does not speak English, I would recommend just putting your own email so that all the notifications that go, if it's for you or for her, you are the one still getting them so that you can assist her. All right, let's move on to the next one from Giancarlo Cosme. What receipt? need on change of address immigration process okay so when you're changing the address you don't really need any receipts you're just going um, online unless you're asking the receipt uh, number for the application and if you have a current um, immigration application if you have a current immigration case with USAS then you most likely have the receipt number if you don't have it, then obviously you're not gonna have the receipt number. Don't worry about that. This is just specifically for those who have the immigration case going. But if you do, then you can find it on that notice, on the very first notice that you received from the immigration that your case is now in process. Okay, let's move on to the next one from Amin Fatehi. What is class of admission if anybody has granted asylum status? Okay, that's a great question. Actually, for granted asylum status, there is a separate class of admission, literally just as it is granted asylum status or approved asylum status. Depending on which application, which document, it might be a little bit different. But yes, there is a separate class of admission for granted asylum status. Um, except... <clears throat> If they are asking for when you got into the country and the status that you had when you got into the country, in that case, you will specify just whatever, whether it was the visa or however you got into the country, that might also be the case. But it depends on the application and what purposes and what you're filling it out for. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Please, I'm Edward from Ghana, West Africa. Hey, Edward. I'm over 21 years and I'm married and my dad is a US citizen and he's in Chicago. Okay, can my dad file for me and if yes, how many years will it take me to be in the US? Thank you. Yes, he can. Go to the website in the video for more details on the processing times. That's the answer from Mofoke Etonde. Yes, Mofoke, you are right. Thank you for answering this comment for me. Yes, he can definitely file uh, for the family reunion, uh, I-130. I have a separate, you're commenting on the video, that's like after approved, you know, if it was already approved. But I do have a separate video specifically on form I-130, how to fill it out, how to submit it. So just forward that video to your dad and, you know, it's pretty easy to follow. Um, now, how long, how many years it will take? That's a little bit of a tough question to ask. Now, in Chicago, in Illinois in general, the cases are processing fairly quickly because it's, you know, it's more, uh, um, a lot more immigrants over there. So immigration services, they kind of had it, have it set already, you know, they're, they're working, they know, they, they know how to work. Um, but nevertheless, I would say the whole total thing, I would say between six months and a year, uh, because you're a child over 21. All right. So yes. Okay. Hopefully that was helpful. Let's move on to the next one from comics and beyond. 
uh, who is a subscriber thank you for being subscribed to this channel can I sponsor my fiance who lives in Ukraine thanks yes absolutely you definitely can in fact you commented on uniting for Ukraine thank you that is the program that is the name of the program that I tried to remember before uniting for Ukraine which is currently open you can learn more either from this video that I made or just directly go to usas.gov I mean all the information that I provide on this channel is directly from usas.gov I don't come up with anything new well at least I try not to. but yes you definitely can sponsor your fiance uh, especially now it's a, it's, it's a great time to do that because you know there is that program available so you you will be given a priority in a way okay moving on to the next one gamer Zlata thanks for your video I have a question sponsor did a mistake in his first name oh okay that's not good beneficiary got approved but now we don't know how to fix it can you help me please thanks okay so uh, okay so you're also on uh, uniting for Ukraine so uh, your sponsor is here in the US and beneficiary already got approved let me ask you a question how bad is the mistake in the first name okay Spo oh, and, and 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 let me start by by asking this is, is that mistake in the sponsor's name first name or is it in the beneficiaries first name because if it's in the sponsor's first name it doesn't really matter it really doesn't matter you're approved approved that's fine beneficiaries okay that's a little bit concerning because you have your immigration case uh, going with the wrong first name now fixing it if you're already approved don't worry about it now if the beneficiary is already here now the next step whatever the next step is going to be in the application just make sure you mention the correct name and if there is an interview involved let's say for example yeah, I don't know if you're filing for for you know, eventually for citizenship and stuff like this you you will be able to change it just make sure to uh, um, you know whenever you're applying for generic stuff like a driver license and social security if you are applying for that if the beneficiary is applying for that make sure that you know you are putting the correct name uh, fixing it uh, on the old application that was already approved that's, it, it, it might be a little bit complicated and it might a create a little bit more of a mess than you know then you want to so I I recommend if it's possible to just move on from that step to the next step and on the next step make a correct name hopefully that answers your question let's move on to the next one Scott Steven Erickson this is so helpful thank you you're very welcome thank you for watching Guatam Luna what okay <laughs> I'm getting issues while filling online i539 on last page it says there are errors in your application please correct these errors or submit your application and bottom of same page it says we found no alerts or warnings in your application so not sure what is the error it's not telling anything I checked everything and all details are correct please advise okay so if you checked everything and there's no uh, specific indicated problems I would say probably most likely problem with the server USAS that I just tried a different time uh, but you posted this comment two weeks ago so hopefully it was um, already resolved please let me know you know it would be helpful to see a follow-up if you resolved it and, and how you resolved it okay moving on to next one Paula Gonzalez who is a subscriber thank you for being subscribed thank you for constantly updating your videos you're awesome Paul. thank you for watching I really appreciate it okay moving on to Shauni Harrison hello sir I am the in the F2B uh, all chargeability area DQ in March of 2021 with my priority date being October 2015 but still have no interview schedule do you think something is wrong okay October 2015 Wow but still have no interview scheduled ah, and and the FTB chargeability area yeah it's it's uh it's quite some time now the thing is like the comment says from Hashain has nine because me when your case was approved by USS and after that how long and he took to answer that's that's a good question because USAS once they approve your case your case is being transferred to the Department of State now if that already was 
transferred to the Department of State, that's a little bit of a different um, question because usually once the case is transferred to the Department of State, it doesn't take that long, about six months normally, maybe up to a year, but not more than that because USA has already approved your case. However, it, 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 by judging by your comment, it doesn't look like your case have even been transferred to the uh, Department of State yet. So in that case, I would try to call USAS, try to schedule the one of those info pass appointments, just see if you can get any information. I mean, it's been seven years. I know some categories, they do take really, really long time, but October 2015, that's like seven years pushing eight years now. So I, I, I would try to get some information and uh, from USAS and, and see what's going on with your um, case. All right, let's move on to the next one. I'll try to finish up all these comments up to right here to Nelly Kelly. And wow, we'll see, it's gonna be a lot, but we'll, we'll try to get there. Uh, Ahmed Beru, awesome. What about the co cover letter? Is it important too? Now, it's a comment on uh, how to write asylum story. Okay, so the statement that you're writing, the as asylum statement, that's how I call it in this video, basically is the cover letter. There, there's not gonna be two separate things. You are putting everything, all the details on the statement. There is no separate cover letter, okay? That's, or it's the same thing. Hopefully that helps. Let's move on to the next one from Ken Han or Han. Was it legal for the government to do this to me? Could IJ adjust status? Asylum interview. I came to the USA. Okay, so let's see. I came to the USA at the port of Ota, Ota Mesa. I had a valid B2 visa. I asked the border guard right away for an asylum. After two days in the border, they sent me to detention for three months. The visa was canceled in accordance with the law. To the two, okay. At the master hearing, the judge accused me of entering the U.S. without a visa, although I had the visa, but I told her I had the visa. The judge postponed another master hearing to find out the visa situation. Is it right? And according to the law, the border guards acted. Is there any chance that if I was not treated according to the law to win the case and get adjustment of status. Okay, Ken, I, I'm really sorry this happened to you. Um, it was a little bit of a mistake on your end asking the border guard for the asylum. It, it's, it's definitely recommended. If you're coming in on a visa into the country, then you should come in on a visa into the country, meaning that you have to go through the border with that visa getting that stamp in there getting the i-90 and and you're good to go and then you are applying for asylum once you already entered that's why the judge kind of had this uh accusation against you saying that you didn't have the visa because you, technically you didn't enter the country with a visa as you got in there and you asked for asylum immediately so even before kind of activating that status activating the visa you requested asylum meaning that, well, you didn't enter the country visa visa. So the judge, yes, what they did makes sense. And what the border guard did makes sense as well uh, because they don't know any better how to respond to the situation. That's why if you're planning to apply for asylum, you get in. Um, and, and I don't know if it's, it, it probably is not, it probably is not the best practice or recommendation or something that I should be even recommending uh, but it's it's a way to avoid the confusion and make sure that the um, the organs that know how to handle this these type of types of cases they handle these types of cases not the border guard all right unfortunately I'm sorry this happened to you um, you can win this case still I highly in this situation I highly recommend, even though I don't like most of them, but I highly recommend an immigration attorney in this case, just because you really do need, and you do need a good immigration attorney at that too, because you've been already past the master hearing. But stay on top of your case, and I really wish you wish you luck on this one. Okay, let's move on to the next one from Michel or Michael Fontenelle. I think it's Michel Fontenelle. Hi, good day. If I choose this to pay with my with money order to whom or what address the money order 
please help. Okay, so that's I form. I'm not sure why you need to pay somebody on I-94, not the I-90 I said on the previous comment, I-90, I-94. Um, you don't really need to pay anybody, I-94. But if you are paying USAS, if they accept the money order on a certain application you're paying for, they will always say who to pay to. If they don't, then they probably don't accept the money orders and don't get scammed. All right, let's move on to the next one. It stars media. Also, what are the, okay, so there's two comments. Great video, thank you for watching. I got a quick question. I have recently changed my name through court and have already updated my name through IRS and DMV. Now it's time to read, renew my EAD. Is there anything I should be aware of when filling out the form? Thank you. Also, what are the documents I need to attach to the application when filing with category C8? Is there a list? Thank you. Okay, so C8 is that pending asylum thing. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how you changed. I mean, maybe uh, you could have saved the name change until the citizenship, but it's fine. Uh, just a little bit extra documents. Now, when you will be filing the documents, most likely they're gonna ask for the name change petition that you got from the court, um, court signed obviously. So you will have to send a copy of that. Um, is there anything else should be? That's it. That's really it other than that. And whenever you're doing the C8 category, um, all you're doing it, you get, you have to make sure that you're applying based on the C8 and there will be that option. Um, I don't think you can file it online anymore, unfortunately. So everything will have to be a paper document, but in the paper application, there is a C8 category, just select that. Make sure to mention your new name and your old name and then attach the name change uh, certificate. So hopefully I answer your question. Let's move on to the next one. Thank you for sharing this. Thank you for watching. Come around. Let's move on to the next one. Uh, Fatin Mohammed. My fiance did not send in a file, chat, screenshots or invoices receipt. Will they agree to a request or do they want to do so via an email? Okay, so my fiance did not send in a file, chat, screenshots, or invoices received. Okay, invoices and screenshots or file chats for what? Will they agree to a request or do they want to do so via an email? I really, really need more information on this one. Please clarify. Okay, let's move on to the next one for now from Ka. Thank you so much for the video. Thank you for watching. I'm filing for filling, filing? for my son-in-law to support him to come to USA. All right, can I file this form I-864? I already filed I-134, thanks again. Yeah, I don't see why not, absolutely. All right, that, that was simple, right, so much. Uh, is there any help to fill out I-589 in NYC? I'm confused, can I find any organization to help fill my document, thank you. Okay, so that's I-589 is the withholding of removal asylum application. Um, obviously an immigration attorney. First, the best thing to do is USAS.gov, official website. Just go through, you know, the videos that I made on asylum. They are everything I get from USAS.gov. So government sources, official sources. If you still can't, immigration attorney would be another option. If you cannot afford an immigration attorney, there's the last option that uh, I would recommend. There are some free um, organizations, immigration organizations that provide help. They're called immigration practitioners, but those are hit and miss. Sometimes you might be able to find somebody who, who knows what they're doing. Sometimes they, you might find somebody who will ruin your case. Okay, so be very careful, be very picky or, or, or whom you trust your case to. All right, hopefully I was able to answer your question. Let's move on to the next one. To D Silva, hi there, your videos and topics are very helpful. Thank you for watching, I'm glad they are. Can you please tell me how do I report someone who fraud to green card? Where do I refer my, my complaint? Okay, so fraud, whenever it comes to reporting fraud, immigration fraud, you can find that information either USAS.gov or ICE. ICE, everybody knows ICE. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Uh, from Mr. MZ or Ramsey. I don't know, I appreciate you. I appreciate you too, thank you for watching. All right, let's move on to the next one and I will scroll it right here and this is gonna be our last one here, Nelly Kelly. Okay, Irina Johnson. Hello, thank you for the video. 
Uh, you're very welcome. I also have a question. My husband filed for my daughter I okay so, so now one one thirty I one thirty he's American citizen. My daughter will have interview in two days. So my question is she's fifteen years old, what kind of questions will be on interview if interview will be in English? She's Russian and interview will be in Moscow, Russia. Thank you. Ahead. Okay, I'm sorry I'm answering this one month ago. I really hope that your daughter's interview went well and there was no problems at all. Now, uh, because the interview is in is in Moscow in Russia, in obviously US Embassy in Moscow in Russia, so the, the people who interview in the embassy, they are obviously the consul, whoever, whoever does the interviews, they speak Russian. It, it's one of the requirements that if you are, you know, consul if you're working in u.s embassy in you know whatever in algeria then you have to speak algerian or in russia you have to speak russian uh so for the future whoever's watching this yes they will be able to answer uh now what kind of questions nothing crazy just relationship hey you know who is this guy your dad who who is this your mom right basic stuff like this um the most maybe i'll even make a separate um video on this because it's a really good question interview specifically in the embassy for you know family reunion cases but it's not as much as the questions it's more of the documentation that they check they go through the documents the relationship you know all the financial documents all the sponsorship all that stuff like this that's more important than the questions questions are really really basic whenever it comes to uh, interviews like this because you you know she is already in in your case your your daughter she was already approved all right so really she's just going to the embassy to just get the visa she's already approved she already went through all the background checks all the all of that stuff so yeah it's, it's not really that complicated okay let's move on to the next one from don Papito, I disagree with your statement on Republicans. Oh God, here we go, politics. Just because they want legal immigration as opposed to open borders doesn't make them less helpful. I Leave your politics to yourself, okay? This channel is not for politics. You're welcome for the video. Next one, Ruth Richmond. Do I need to pay for the green card or that is covered by the fees that I pay? Uh, okay, so great question. Very, very good question. It's uh, it was asked on petition for alien relative. So meaning that that video I did for the cases that have been already transferred from USAS to the um, Department of State. All right. So when you are transferred to the Department of State to the NVC, that's their own like internal portal, whatever, you will see a few options to make the payments one of those payments is going to be already for the green card all right so once you pay that and i recommend paying it all in advance even before the person who you are um, sponsoring goes to the interview in the embassy even before they come here because if you pay all of that in advance once they come here they will get the green card pretty quick i think within like three months so if you pay in advance it's definitely worth it because it comes the green card comes much faster and okay to answer your question briefly no you don't need to pay separately everything is done in advance through the NVC website okay let's move on to the next one this is a great video I want to thank you you're very welcome thank you for watching it will really help a lot of people from different countries I subscribe and wish you the best FLUSA yeah FLUSA thank you for watching okay last question Nelly Kelly well, that's a big one Okay, hello, I'm a non-Ukrainian, but I have lived in Ukraine for six years and I'm a permanent resident and I also have a Ukrainian partner that we have been living together for over two years and a Ukrainian three-year-old child. My older brother is in Maryland and will be our sponsor. I have a good job with a good payment in Europe already. My questions are, should I fill in the I-134 from that I have a job and declare my asset or not? Yes, absolutely, definitely. Uh, whenever it comes to stuff like this, if you're filling out the application, all the questions, be as truthful as possible. Very, very important. Number two, in marital status section, what will I feel as my status with my Ukrainian girl, friend, for them to know that we are common partners? I 
good question. I have no idea. Uh, are you guys married? If you guys are not married, uh, is there an option for uh, co cohabitation or something like this? Uh, if not, then you'll have to select single. That's really, I don't know. That's just how it is. If there is an if there is not an option in the application, you'll have to select either other or if there isn't, then just select whatever there is. Okay, number three, since you have to fill the form separately, if I fill two different forms for me and my girlfriend, how do we indicate that the form is for two people together so they don't treat it as two different individuals? Since I have to fill the form separately, if I fill two different forms for me and my girlfriend, how do we indicate that the form is for two people together? Okay, great question. So it will be, it'll have to be specifically for this program. I-134 uniting for Ukraine. Uh, it, it is for separate people and unfortunately there is no way to do it together. You will have to do it separately. Um, that's just unfortunately part of uh, this application. Uh, thank you all and I await your response. So hopefully it was helpful. Um, I do need honestly a little bit more information. Just uh regarding your because i i really don't get your family union so you guys are not married you just live together for over two years and you have a three-year-old child um i i think there should be an option for for situations like this where you live together and not married yet um, but again because you're not married it will be regardless it will be a two separate applications there is just you you can't do anything about it unfortunately so uh done with uh, this one for uh, today i'll try to make another one later um this week answering further uh, questions thank you everyone for asking the questions hopefully you found some answers on this one and uh i'll see you guys in the next video